What's up, Pandus? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I recently read one of the comments that said, Panda, why don't you ever review women's watches? And that's because I'm a dude and I don't really own a lot of women's watches. But I do own one, or I should say I bought one for my lady a, a while back. And I want to show it to you because it's in ridiculously good condition and it's still a phenomenal looking watch. You know, uh, despite the fact that this watch has been effectively out of production for a decade or so. Uh, you know, it's still a really good looking watch. And this one in particular is kind of one of the earliest models. So it's a, it's a Curium. I've also heard them pronounced Curi Curium, like, like a, like a lighter er Curium. But I've always said Curium as the I is followed by a consonant that's followed by a vowel. So I always give it the long I. But Regardless, you know, it was kind of an important watch in many ways for Tag Heuer because in the 90s, the 4000 series watch needed to be updated and they hired a designer, Jorg Heisek, I think his name is pronounced, uh, to come in and update the watch. Now in the 90s, small watches, thin watches, um, futuristic looking watches, sleek looking watches were kind of in. And so what uh, he, Jorg Heisek did is really kind of adapt the 4000 series watch design to kind of get rid of the raised lettering, kind of the dated types of things and give the tags at the time a little bit more youthful, a little more sporty appearance. And actually I think the ad campaigns for this were a lot of tie-ins with like tennis players if I recall correctly. Now uh, regardless of that, I think the watch was really successful in bringing in kind of a lot of people into the tag brand that maybe wouldn't really have thought much of it. It was kind of an expensive watch. I want to say $1,500 to $2,000. They were really small. So kind of a high price point and very small size, which really, again, it was kind of the 90s thing. The Curium was 39 millimeters for the men and 28 for the ladies. And they were in this quartz, um, they were quartz movements only. And I want to show you here that it is kind of have like this, does kind of have like this diver's bezel and not the easiest thing because of this liquid metal kind of shape where you got to kind of grab these insets to turn it. But I can turn it, it's unidirectional, I can't turn it the other way. and. Pretty solid clicks, and despite the age on this watch, really, really solid still. No play particularly. And I can move the pip right back there to 12 o'clock. See if I can get it right on it. Okay. Oops. Yeah, I overshot one. All right. Well, I'll do it again and get it uh, lined up. But the cool thing about it is the band, you know, even though it looks like it's only 15 millimeters across, it is on the, on the adjustable portion of links, but it kind of expands out here, kind of like a... The hood of a cobra to mesh into the brushed stainless steel case up here so these three links up at the top have to be bought in a set and you can get these and they're like a couple hundred bucks if you can find them uh, still but if anything goes wrong with the links on either side up here these top three or four links you got to buy them already assembled because as you can see there's no way to pound out the links there or the the pins you can do it down here and uh, make your adjustments has a deployment clasp and uh, it kind of snaps down the this portion just kind of fits and gets compressed into these two the between the two bars there and snaps in doesn't really hold it you know it holds it pretty well you can pull it apart but it pushes in and then you get the little tag shield flap that kind of locks in in place you know really nice you know brush stainless steel uh, in some of the models the center uh, portion of the link was polished but I kind of like the brush it kind of holds up a little better now the other thing I'll say and I don't know this as a for a fact but I want to say that um, these pips the at the hour markers were new I think they were slashes on the 4000 series and then what did change was the logo for one over time this kind of became just a the outline of the logo, you know, where it was just like a black logo on whatever colored background. I really do like those. I mean, those are kind of unique, but the gray or the green and red, 
but something of kind of more of a vintage Tag Heuer look. So you don't, you don't see that a lot, and it's kind of a telltale sign that they're a little bit older. The other thing that debuted on this model was what they called, I think, the Mercedes hand. You get this peace symbol hand, very reminiscent of some of the other Swiss watches, like Rolex uses them a lot. Um, big pip on the second hand here, obviously quartz, it's ticking, and then loom on it. But uh, the, the Mercedes hands were fairly unique in that they only lasted kind of the first generation, and then they were replaced with more of the traditional solid bars uh, for hands. And so that was um, something that also distinguishes this as a 90s watch as opposed to an early 2000s watch. And then after that, uh, they actually did actually step up and make the watch a little larger, but then also put in an automatic movement eventually as well. So the watch kind of grew in size and complexity. There, there were uh, additional complications available, uh, you know, chronograph feature, I believe. Tag Heuer shield on the crown there and a screw down crown unscrews it just popped out there you can pull it out here and adjust the time forward and or back and forward push it down and screw it back in when you're done and because of these little crown protectors here it's a little bit tough to get a handle on it you can see how little I'm not I'm not one for usually demoing ladies watches but I'll just show you how uh, you know what I'm not gonna show you look at that it won't even fit on me but as you can see in my hand here how little this watch is pretty common for women's watches and kind of the liquid metal the really futuristic shape and in uh, design of the watches was kind of common in the 90s and early 2000s the Omega Seamasters had a model that was very similar to it. Just a really good watch, dome sapphire crystal. It, it brought everything together. And even now, when you look at this watch, I still think it's a good looking watch. Um, yes, telltale signs that there were that there are some things here that are uh, of a little bit kind of a, of a earlier period, but still great looking watch this thing is held up like a champ all it's needed is batteries in my opinion it's kind of a style that's starting to come back a little bit as watch sizes kind of come down and they want to be simpler and sleeker so uh, the tag Heuer curium this is the women's edition peter von panda out